I really can't think of the number of times in the last two years that I've sat in this chair that I've railed against HS2. It just seems to be the most astonishing waste of money. And a project we were first told would cost 35 billion, then we were told it could have cost 55 billion. Now it's going to cost well over 100 billion, and it may not even work at all. Well, I'm joined by Joe Ventry, Digital Campaigns Manager of the Taxpayers Alliance. Now, Joe, this isn't just me railing against the railway. There is now actually an official body saying that it's unachievable. Yes, absolutely. And I think what we're seeing in this report from the IPA is an acknowledgement of what a lot of us have been the saying. The IPA? Yes, the Infrastructure and Projects Thank Authority. You. You know, a serious body that looks yes. into these things in a rather independently minded way. And what they've concluded is phase one of HS2 and phase two are both uh, in the red. Frankly, that's how they put it. They're in the red. They are at risk of not being achievable. And at this point, what they're saying is that being at that stage, the whole project itself could need to be reviewed. Now, not being achievable means, number one, the budget's just, I mean, gone completely. But number two, the time frame. I mean, is it going to be 2041? before it's completed. Absolutely, that's how it's looking. The time frame is escalating, the costs are escalating, and frankly, the, the, the case for this project has completely fallen apart. It was already on shaky legs, but now I think even bodies like the IPA are recognising that this project is, is for the birds. Now, the case for the project was there is undercapacity on the London to Birmingham and then on to Manchester Line. Undercapacity um, and that it's too slow. I've never agreed with the too slow, because you can go from Euston into Manchester Piccadilly in two hours and ten minutes, or a little bit less than that, actually. So uh, that's never bothered me. You know, getting to Manchester 20 minutes quick has never bothered me. But capacity has, has been a real issue here, or was before the pandemic. Yes, and I think the pandemic has, actually has changed a lot of things. Of course, we're seeing a move out of London. The cost of living in London is particularly high. And, of course, there is now this problem where the, uh, the terminus may not even reach London Euston itself. It could be out in Old Oak Common. You can't even get a straight answer on that from government ministers. So I think it's no wonder when you see these kind of kerfuffles that the whole project is now in the red. Now, the last time I looked, we'd sunk about £8 billion sterling into this. Is, is that figure bigger than that now? I or? believe it's somewhere in the region of £19 billion now. 19 Yes. OK, because we were... Fun enough, we were in Uxbridge um, about six months ago, and this was a massive local issue, the disruption that was being caused in that constituency. So the big question, Joe Ventry, and the one that I struggle to answer without spinning into conspiracy theories about who might have been awarded the big contracts and is making the big money, is why? Why, oh why, oh why, are this government so committed to HS2? Well, this is the thing, Nigel. It's really hard to answer that question. I think you'd struggle to have government ministers up here telling you why at this point. The case has completely fallen apart, particularly so in recent years where we've seen living habits change, where we've seen the cost of capital now going through the roof. And the cost-benefit analysis don't even make a good case either. We've seen some cost-benefit analysis so showing why? us... So why? So why? Well, why indeed? I, I wish I could answer it for you, and I think all of us are scratching our heads. But of course, this is the tip of the iceberg. If you look at the report today from the independent, yep. uh, from the Infrastructure okay. and Projects <laughs> Agency, yes, uh, you know, this is one of, I believe, 244 projects, the vast majority of which are in amber rating, which means there are serious concerns. So I think there are wider institutional problems here where we can't seem to get these big projects over the line without wasting huge sums of taxpayers' money and without them running way over uh, time See, frames. I mean, we're living now with a rising tax burden. Uh, we're going to get some more announcements tomorrow on alcohol duties, which will go up again on everything apart from very low alcohol beers or wines. Uh, so we pay more and more of our money in the form of direct and indirect tax every year. And yet it seems, it seems frankly, that a lot of our money is being badly misspent. Well, that's it. We've got a cost of government crisis as much as we've got a cost of living crisis. And I think we all need to see that addressed because, you know, you and I, other people watching today, hardworking taxpayers wonder, well, where on earth is all my money going? And I think when they see reports like this of HS2 spiralling out of control, one of many projects which is doing so, they're quite rightly going to ask, well, what on earth am I working hard and paying all this tax for? So who are the big winners out of HS2? Who's going to make all the money out of this? Is it the construction companies? Are they British firms, international firms? Who are the big winners? 
Well, there's a lot of capital spending going on, isn't there? And I think there's been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, miscalculations in terms of land valuation. I think that's a lot of the reason why the IPA is saying that the costs are mounting. But I can tell you one winner, Nigel, and that seems to be Mark Thurston to me, the outgoing chief executive of HS2 Limited. This, of course, is a man who was on over £600,000 a year. Yep. Uh, has recently been congratulated by Mark Harper, the Transport Secretary, for doing a so-called fantastic job. I mean, you know... Oh, rather like the boss of NatWest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I understand in those circumstances you have to be polite and say, oh, you've done a good job. But, I mean, I think that takes the biscuit, doesn't it? I mean, there's huge amounts of taxpayers' money just slushing around here. And I think, my goodness, if this doesn't give us reason to intervene now, what will? And the Labour Party, what do they have to say on HS2? Well, I, I'm not really hearing much from the Labour Party either, but I think, you know, whether it's Conservatives, Labour, so one, some government has to come along now and have the courage to say this isn't working. Fundamentally, this isn't working. If we can't cancel it because of commitments, then we need to seriously downscale it when we can and make it work for the uh, lowest amount of money possible. Joe Venturi, thank you for coming in and joining me here on GB News. And I have to say, you know, as you go around this country, you find that mobile phone coverage is worse now than it was 20 years ago. I'm not joking. You know, the phone cuts out in the middle of London, uh, all over the place. Terrible phone connectivity in this country. And in many cases, and many places, actually, internet coverage, internet speeds so slow that, you know, transferring files, videos, is a very, very difficult thing to do. Now, you know, I know that Elon Musk has come up with something called Starlink, uh, which can solve many of those problems. But, you know, that's £75 a month per house. It's not actually in everybody's you know, budget and pocket to do it. So I have to say, I think spending that money on genuine connectivity in the modern 21st century, rather than getting to Birmingham and Manchester a few minutes quicker, would make a lot more sense to me.